Hi students and welcome to the Home Lab Freezing Point Depression pre-lab video. Have you ever wondered why we salt roads in the winter? Or why the ocean doesn't freeze while smaller bodies of fresh water like puddles, rivers and lakes do? If you've ever done a polar bear swim in the ocean during winter, you know that the ocean water is very, very cold. Have you ever wondered why icebergs float in the open ocean and don't melt like an ice cube in a glass? The answer behind all of these questions relates to freezing point depression. This home lab contains two parts. Both parts of the lab explore freezing point depression. There are three main purposes of this lab. The first purpose is to determine the relationship between freezing point depression of salt water and solute concentration or in, in other words, the concentration of salt in the water. The second purpose of this lab is to express the concentration of a solute in moles per liter, or molarity, which we're familiar with already in Chemistry 11. In the second part of this lab, we will observe how readily water freezes when surrounded by salt water. Before you start this lab, you need a little background information about freezing point depression. Freezing point depression describes the process where the temperature at which liquid water freezes is lowered by adding another compound. It depends only on the number of dissolved particles in, a, in solution, and this is called a colligative property. For example, water freezes at approximately zero degrees Celsius, but when a solute such as salt is added to the solvent water, the freezing point decreases. We learn the terms solvent and solute in chemistry 11, but let's do a quick refresher. The solute is the substance in the lesser amount that is dissolved in the solvent. The solvent is a substance of which there is a greater amount. In this experiment, and quite commonly in chemistry, salt is the solute and water is the solvent. Let's look at how freezing depression or freezing point depression works. If you look at this screen for a moment, imagine that the little blue molecules are molecules of water. And in the part B below we see the little orange particles are particles of solute or salt in this case. Water, the solvent, has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. When water reaches this temperature, the water molecules organize themselves in a very orderly way to form solid ice. However, in the second picture below, as solute is added to the water, the solute particles prevent the water molecules from getting into an organized manner and forming a solid. As a result, the salt water remains a liquid at temperatures below the normal freezing point of water. In other words, the freezing point of water has become depressed by adding the solute. The concept of adding a solute to depress the freezing point actually works both ways. Solutes can be added to lower or depress the freezing point, and solutes can also elevate the boiling point, or making the boiling point higher than it would normally be for the solvent. In fact, there are a couple other examples of colligative properties, including vapor pressure, lowering, and osmotic pressure, but in this lab we're specifically looking at freezing point depression. As I stated earlier, colligative properties are affected by the amount of, so of dissolved particles in a solution and not the type of particles. This means that the greater the concentration of dissolved solute particles, the more the freezing point of the solvent can be depressed, up to a certain point. Once the solution is saturated, meaning that no more solute can be dissolved, the freezing point cannot be depressed any further. In this lab, we will measure the concentration, also called the molarity, of the solution. Remember that molarity is expressed in units of moles per liter, or more specifically, moles of solute per liter of solvent. In this lab, we will test both salt and sugar to determine how they depress the freezing point of water. While the quantity of solute is the most important factor, it is important to think about whether the solute is an ionic or a covalent compound. 
Let's have a look at this picture here. If we think about adding sugar to water as opposed to salt in water, we can see that sugar is a molecular compound. Molecular is another word for covalent. So sugar is a covalent compound or a molecular compound. When we add it to water, the individual molecule does not break apart. It dissolves in water, but we don't have any breaking of the covalent bonds within a sugar molecule. On the other hand, salt is an ionic compound. It dissociates in water and splits apart into two separate ions. So when an ionic solute such as salt or sodium chloride is added to water, there are twice as many particles present in solution because the salt dissociates into separate ions. So the concentration of ions in a solution of salt water will be double that of a solution of sugar water, assuming we added the same number of moles of solute. In part two of this lab, we will observe how readily water freezes when surrounded by salt water. We know that a solution of salt water can remain as a, as a liquid at a temperature lower than the freezing point of water. And in part two, we will test this. Uh, we'll we will test what happens when we add a Ziploc bag of pure liquid water to a cold solution of salt water. The concept that we're exploring in this lab relates to the reason why freshwater icebergs stay frozen in cold salt water. The background information that is helpful for part two of this lab is that of heat flow. You may remember from earlier science courses in school or just from general life experience that heat flows from warmer to cooler objects until they reach about the same temperature. If we think back to our iceberg floating in even colder salt water, the heat flows from the iceberg to the water, allowing the iceberg to remain frozen and solid. Now you're ready to get started on your home lab. Remember to get your materials ready before you start. The materials for parts one and two are listed in this lab. You can use a blender to crush your own ice for this lab. You can use ice cubes uh, and add them to a blender and you do not need too many. You will need a thermometer for this lab, but any type of thermometer, thermometer will work. All the materials for this lab are easy to obtain and hopefully are ones that you already have around your home. This lab is very safe to conduct at home. When you print out the lab procedure, the last page of the lab contains the data table for part one. The data table is already set up for you and it's easily detached so you can rip it off and record your data as you do the lab. Before you start your home lab, remember to have a camera ready. You need to submit three photos, one from each part of the lab and one of you doing the lab. So you're ready to begin. You can read over your lab procedure, get your materials together. Good luck and have fun.